Okay, I want to just reread verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So it's, it's an amazing understatement, really, isn't it? This is God, <laughs> creator of the universe, coming into the world. And it's astonishing, isn't it? She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths. Not only that, it's God becoming a man. Possibly the greatest miracle that's ever happened. God added humanity to his divinity and amazingly it was missed by almost the whole world and it's still missed by so many people, if not the majority people in the world. But praise God, the angels saw it, they rejoiced and so on. The shepherds saw it and so on. I also just want to read verse four again. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house of li and lineage of David. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Why Bethlehem? We've already heard it. That is to fulfill prophecy. Micah 5 verse 2. But why and of course that's a great point and it's, it's very encouraging. And, but why did, why did the Lord choose Bethlehem? Why not Jerusalem? Why not Nazareth? Why not somewhere else? I can't think that he'd be choosing Epsom, but uh, anyway. He chose Bethlehem. So I've got two points about this. So number one, perhaps it's to do with the meaning of, of the name. Bethlehem means house of bread. Beth is house, Lehem is bread. In fact, if you attempt to learn Hebrew on Duolingo, <laughs> one of the first words they introduce you to is, is bread. Le lechem. Something like lechem. And bread and then Beit Lechem, house of, house of bread. And so God, Jesus is the living bread. God was sending living bread to his house of bread. Praise God for that. He was announcing to the world that living bread had, had come. And we were saying in the meeting eight days ago, in John 6, I was suggesting that the most fundamental need in the world is bread, food. And I think we praise God, I expect we, I, I just think, probably we'll all have something to eat today. Not likely that we won't. <laughs> But uh, not everybody in the world is in that position. And if you're without food, your mind gets very focused on the one thing. And I, th I think that would happen to the majority of us. Maybe we would find grace from God to... Well, I hope we would still praise God if we were starving. But uh, it does rather focus the mind if you have nothing to eat. Bread, bread is the fundamental need. So God has sent the living bread. He sent Jesus. The world is starving spiritually. And <clears throat> that's very serious. So in John 6, I mentioned the other day that it says in that chapter six times that Jesus came down from heaven. Five of the times it's Jesus saying it himself. Another time the, the Jews, the Jewish leaders were complaining and they were quarrelling and they were saying, how can he be saying this? But Jesus said so many times that he's the bread of God in that chapter. He said, let me read a few of them, I've written them down here. I am the bread of life, I am the living bread. This is all John 6. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He who feeds on me will live because of me. That's just a few. I actually counted them, and I, I may not have counted, I only counted once, I may have made a mistake, but I counted 15 times. 15 times. It references... Bread of, bread of God, bread of life. Fifteen times in that 
in that uh, one chapter. Bethlehem, the house of bread, living bread, come to us. Wonderful. And then also, of course, Bethlehem is the, is the city of David, the city of the king. And somehow I think these two ideas go together. What's the problem in the world? It's starving, spiritually. What's the problem with the world? Everybody's got the wrong king. Instead of Jesus as king, they make themselves as king, they've got the wrong God, instead of worshipping God, they've made themselves an idol or they're worshipping some other idol. It, it all goes together, doesn't it? Sometimes if we, if we abide under his lordship, then we'll be fed with this, this bread of heaven. And I think the, the, the same, you get the same thought from the angel when he said in verse 11, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. So the, the, the king who's been born is a, is a Saviour. We need a Saviour. All these very simple things coming together in the one story, isn't it? But he is Christ and he is, he, he is the Lord. He, he's born so he can feed, feed the world. If, he doesn't, if we're not fed by him, we are, we are starving. Spiritually, we are dead. Which is what the Bible tells us, isn't it? And then, of course, a, a, a person who's in sin can't feed on this living bread. And that's why Jesus said, we re I, I, I read it out before, the bread that I should give is my flesh which I should give for the life of the world. He died for sin, he died for our sins, he died <coughs> to, re to remove sin, he had to do that, so that we might be able to, to feed on this, this living bread. So, very little thought, very wonderful thought, bread of God, born in Bethlehem, the city of David. Is he my king? If he's my king, I can feed on him. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we do thank you for the, 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 this wonderful message of Christmas, Lord, that Jesus has come, living bread, <coughs> and we can feed on him. Amen. Amen. Now, as I often do, I, 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 I forgot one of the main, the main points I'm just going to mention it. And my time, Mike says my time is up, probably well up. <laughs> now, going back to, <laughs> sorry, uh, this is why these days I, I have my notes in front of me, but it's even if it's in front of me, I end up forgetting it. <laughs> it's astonishing, isn't it? So, Verse 7, let me read verse 7 again. She brought forth, forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. We had it in the quiz, where, where was Jesus' bed? It was a manger. What's a manger? A manger is a feeding trough for animals. That's where, that's where, it's amazing isn't it? The design and plan of God puts it in the manger. For, in other words, Jesus is food for the beasts. I don't mean the donkeys and all that in there, the cattle, the cattle are lowing and all that. But I mean spiritually. We, 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 are, we are all beasts. We are all self-centered beasts. So, you know, the Bible says some, some are foxes. It says that, doesn't it? Some are snakes. Some are brute beasts. But all of us are sinful, self-centered Beast, but we're we're in, in in that state. We are we are invited to come as a as a as a beast, <laughs> a sinful. It's wonderful, isn't it? Invited to come to feed on the, this this bread of God, and then of course the person becomes what he eats. We've got the doctor sitting here. The doctor knows all about it, so I better not <coughs> become too unscientific, but. <coughs> Uh, fundamentally we become what we eat if we, if we feed on Jesus we, we, our lives will be transformed they must be must be the evidence isn't it feeding on Jesus become like him and of course that's that's his his plan
Amen. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, laid in him in a manger. The invitation is to the whole world to come to Jesus. Wonderful, isn't it? And to be filled with him. Amen. <laughs>